were a very small company with limited amount of resources. So we've had to focus on things that matter, that are very practical, that make a difference. We focus on things that are practical, that can make a difference for our clients. Thank you for pointing out that you can enjoy this. <laughs> so on the left, you'll see a picture of a New York City school that is real school, the School of Collaboration and the School of the Future. And I just want to remind us what we've learned so far in Postal Vision 2020 in the five, four years, depending upon where you've been engaged. Back in 2011, um, Larry Weber pointed out uh, that the Postal Service has a operational advantage in the change address system and suggested that we look at a possible way to make that social. And so that's still an opportunity on the table for those of us that are interested in exploring these possibilities that have been discussed in the past at Postal Vision 2020. Um, in 2012, uh, we had Matt Swain suggest the possibility that the Postal Service could open up all of its IP systems and to the private spe sector to spur innovation. And you see a lot of innovation here without the IP systems even being open. Um, in 2013, we saw a whole lot of far out ideas become reality. SoPos told us about how we can use our social ID to get mail delivered wherever we want, whenever we want. Letters enabled us to use an app to generate a physical mail piece. And both Gov Delivery and Escher were doing amazing things to integrate democracy, social, internet, and physical communications. So here we are in 2015, exploring a whole lot of new ways, and I hope you have fun doing it. Um, we now live in a world where when is the new where? We're dealing with conditional addressing. You can actually have a pizza delivered to the park, so you and your friends can have a picnic. Timing is everything. Uh, a couple of months after the postal in, uh, PAEA in 2006, the iPhone was introduced and communication changed forever. Um, just two weeks ago, there was a new app introduced called Magic, if you read about it in TechCrunch, a simple text message free form, ask for anything you want, and they will deliver it so long as it's legal. <laughs> they got 15,000 requests in 48 hours, they had to shut down. I mean, they are meeting those requests, but it was a rather demanding service. So who is this person now? That's part of the challenge that corporations, companies are trying to deal with as we all become who we are in different facets of our lives. The census demonstrates that we have more unique people than we have unique names, whether it's first names or last names. And for lots of reasons, people change their names over the course of their lives or use different forms of their identity in different venues. And companies are struggling to figure out who you are. And companies with legacy systems have an even more difficult time figuring that out because their databases can't grow fast enough for the explosion of data available to identify these individuals. So keeping track of this stuff is really not easy. And we all learn that preferences make a difference. And we all kind of know that establishing preferences is a really easy thing. We do it on our phone and we do it on our apps, but we do it on each app individually. Now, how many apps do you have on your phone? Your customer expects you to listen and learn about what they like. They're investing their time to put their preferences in those apps so that you respond appropriately to those preferences that they've articulated. Do you remember when you were little and your mom used to pour you a glass of milk and she would say, say when? The point is even your mother had to ask. More data elements provide more details, more accurate information about figuring out who this individual is, what they want, and when they want it. Now, most large mailers were not born yesterday. So they have legacy systems that can't easily adapt to the exploding amount of data as we've acknowledged. Um, Sasha here has 78 apps, but she mostly used 20 of them. I don't know who's going to invent what next, and hopefully if you did, you'd tell us here. But with my magic wand, I'd create a new app called Stay When. And I could figure out when I want it, what I want it, and tell you about it, and you could deliver it. So as far as I know, even though you think there may be obstacles, there's no real technological obstacles to creating any of the things that Marshall, Chris, or Sean have talked about today, or any of the speakers earlier. And what I'd like is for some of you to raise your hand and say you're interested in experimenting with us. Let's go on the journey of making it happen. Anyone? 
Anyone raising their hand? <laughs> I see you in the back. 